All right. Uh, the Breakfast Club did an interview with Pierce Morgan. Uh, Pierce Morgan popped up there, and it was Charlemagne and Envy, obviously, because there's no third host still. Mm. Uh, it was a. I thought it was a great interview. One of the better interviews that I've one of the better interviews that I've seen. Like, because I'm only tuning into Breakfast Club right now for interviews. Yeah. But this was like, I really enjoyed this interview. Yeah. This is honestly the first interview I watched in months. Because of yeah. Piers. The beginning of last year. Because of Piers. You know, Piers Morgan, just in general, it's what? like I've been watching him. I We talked about it a little bit in the pre-show, but, like, I didn't even know he existed until yeah. he did the thing with Andrew Tate. Mm -hmm. And then I started watching it, and I'm like, oh, he's popping up with a bunch. Because he was tapping into that red pill area a lot. So a lot of the big people in those spaces and just online debater people would just started popping up on legend. the show. He went to the, he oh, went, my God, bro. His yeah. resume was crazy. His bro. resume is extensive, nigga. He's <laughs> a legend. Yeah, which, was, which is why it was crazy to see him in the gutter with all these friends dudes. Yeah. Like, Literally, uh, what's yeah. a Hassan that, Piker? That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's why I'm just thinking he's just his new voice. or Not yeah. new, but obviously he's been around. For, mm. But I was like, God damn, like hearing his background for real, yeah. just the shit that he was doing before 38, before, mm. before at the age of 27 I'm like yeah. god damn he really been doing that bro, shit bro he's a legend yeah. and it's one of those things where like you respect I've the British always dude. known about him but I never cared about him you get what I mean and it's I guess I mean he did exactly what he had to do cause now you know nigga on the breakfast club he got a new audience <laughs> and what was is, you think that was the only reason he did this or he kind of no. fucked with Charlemagne. He's kind of Charlemagne's been on Piers Morgan before, have, so it's probably yeah. just one of those you know extensions of the favors. And Piers is huge. He's it's like it makes sense. He's big. Yeah. In that uh, political and oh that yeah, political he's big. World yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, you know, this segment would not be right unless I didn't. Elbows out, baby. For yeah, the next 10, yeah. 15 minutes. Uh, <laughs> dirty buckets. Bully. Yeah, no, these are Flagrant clean, files. These are, these clean, are clean buckets. buckets. You, must, you, just might, you might not like how I get them off. Just a you different know era, a different yeah. era of hoop. Jesus yeah, Christ. So, He's right, using man. his elbows. Yeah, yeah, so outside of the inter I did think the interview was being amazing. It was just like another example of the things that frustrate me with Charlemagne in terms mm -hmm. of like elevating his overall conversation and um, alleged objectivity. So it's like during this interview, there are several things that are happening, like Piers is coming from the objective my state. Obviously, he's like, one thing I will get Piers, at least in this interview, I've seen him not be fair either, but he was keeping this, he was bouncing back and forth between both sides of a His moral compass. He was pretty playful. He was being, he was had a very even bounce back and forth, and what was driving me crazy was just like, Charlemagne, they even said, there was a moment in the interview when he was like, I think you're like me, and you're objective, and you're not extreme left or extreme right. And it was like they kind of, he kind of level set were both objective. Mm -hmm. But as the conversation continued, Charlemagne could not He's, walk into yeah. the level setting that okay. they had already set. You <laughs> they know what I'm saying? They didn't see the same amount of nuance. Like, it's crazy mm -hmm. that Charlemagne in an interview with a Fox News pundit. Yeah. Seemed like the extremist. Yeah. And he seemed yes. like the moderate. <laughs> yeah. The because, yeah. like, you know, he defended Trump, but, you know, it was rationale behind it. It was criticism mixed yeah. into yeah. it. Yeah. And it's like Charlemagne, it, it's almost like he couldn't speak outside of talking points that people who don't really think this shit out yeah. all the way do. Yes. And it was just like. But from the common man. Yeah. From the common. Yeah. But then it's like. The niggas who not you're putting voting. all these reps in, bro. It's like you're putting all these reps in. And of course, you, there's going to be a learning curve in terms of like doing political conversation. But having a political. Actually having less education in political conversations <laughs> means you should be more objective than the, than the next person. You should be have a, a greater perspective. You should have a greater perspective and because you're not, and you haven't been, uh, you haven't been, there's no indoctrine over yeah, you hanging no sort over of your head. Or yeah, anything, right. And we, uh, that's known. That's, that's verbalized. No, that's verbalized, yeah. Because there's obvious, there's an obvious one mm -hmm. that he has, that he moves but with. There's but there's not one that a system has kind of instituted. And that, that he's, that, and that he claims he's not a part of. And right. I feel like right. a lot of that brainwash is coming from some superior. You get what I mean? Yeah. Like, because we talked about this a little bit. Like, I pray this is not like his actual mm -hmm. thought process. His real thoughts, or at least like, He's kind of like playing the character of Charlemagne by keeping it base level. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. On some like satirical shit. But <laughs> yeah, but I, I feel like even even if you're in the infancy stage of your political philosophies and how you how you want things to be. Yeah. You should still, if you're talking to a person who is obviously an expert in this field, you got to have some type of skepticism when it comes to things that they're saying. Because he knows more than you. Yeah. And you because, the mark. 
Well, essentially, yeah. Yeah. So you got to be wary but of it, what could be because it depends. This, this is a professional spin. But it's artist. also that that can make you come Pierce off. And I want to make ahead, y'all watch a lot more than me, but that can also make you come off as combative. You get what I mean? If you yeah. don't, if you're not coming as like a student trying to learn, it's a delicate balance. But yeah. you also don't want to come off as completely naive. To yeah, where you yeah. just like what he says is law for sure. Which is worse though? No, naive I don't think or, you come um, off of that either because you know what I think it is. Uh, Piers Morgan said that Chris Rock told him this. And he mentioned it on the Breakfast Club interview, and then he also they also linked together, linked up a day later on Pierce Morgan unfiltered show uh-huh. or uncensored show, and Charlemagne did have a better performance there. But like in the Breakfast Club performance, uh, he was telling him that Chris Rock said you can't demonize people more than what they are, mm-hmm. and you can't oversell and undersell people pretty right. much, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's like because both extremes are equally dangerous. Both extremes are equally dangerous for the party trying to make the change, essentially. Right, right, right. And it's like that's Charlemagne was still on that. You know what I'm saying? He was still on the let's over demonize because you know what else I think it is. I think it's hard a lot of the times for people. But the only reason I don't cut Charlemagne this slack is because he presents himself as an objective. I haven't chose a side. So mm-hmm. the only reason I'm not cutting him this slack is because of the way he presents his opinion. But I do think people have a hard time. You know, so if you strongly believe this, right, I strongly believe something. And um, if you just agree with it, but quickly move on, you're like, I agree with that. And you quickly move some, on. That doesn't satisfy said person. Like Some right? people, a lot of people listen to respond and not to hear. Correct. So that's what you're saying with Charlamagne. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. That's exactly what I'm saying. Because yeah. it's like, Pierce Morgan would lay out these things and or just ask. There were several times in the interview, he's asking basic questions that are yes and no. And Charlamagne's replying with a question, not an answer, which is always an L. Mm-hmm. And, or he's saying... So if you took all these things away from Trump, blah, 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 how would you view that? And he's like, yeah, but what about the 97 convictions? He's like, yeah, bro, I think it's disgusting. I asked you a question, though. And you know yeah, what I'm saying? You know, that's like, that shit. And that's the thing, right? Because, you know, shout out to LOI. Tony be doing that shit. <laughs> and it makes me want to... <laughs> Tony does that on, be doing what? on me and Charlemagne to be doing too. what? But yeah. just the... I heard you say, like, but, uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, nah. it's the... Answer to the question is either an analogy or a metaphor that changes the context of the right. situation. Yeah. But uh, overall, like one out of ten for Charlemagne. Like what y'all giving him? I don't know. You don't know what you giving him. One out of ten well, for which performance? Like his performance on the Breakfast Club, because it's like his past ones. What do you, what do you like get I for, said, what do you get for showing up? Where Knock. Ah, you, you on the SAT? Okay, well, couple hundred points. Ah, you bullshit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What do you give a show? I might have to call you a fuck nigga for Charles man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it, was, it wasn't. But this is better I'm than like you, his past interviews. You get what I mean? Like his, no, it wasn't. I'm gonna tell well, you why it wasn't. And this is when his past. Recently. This is when shit was lost, and I wish I had the timestamp in there. When he's when Piers laid out his points, and mind you, they're talking openly, and Charlemagne just says. I, mean, I don't know even. I don't even know what you're talking about. But I got another question. It completely moves the subject completely because he's like but, refuses to go down this level of open conversation. And that's the biggest thing I think that I, that's the annoyance for me is that at one point we would get objective or more objective Charlemagne. And it's the thing. It's like you're the voice. You know, sometimes you get chosen for a position, right? Because I know he said things like that too, where it's like. Look, I'm just somebody that's asking questions. I was putting it. It's like the political side of things was kind of put on you, right? But then you also know the importance of us, your target market, hearing them. But then during these conversations, you just give up and say, look, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. Like, let's just move on. So you just like give up. You throw in the towel on a non-debate. And that's what I was kind of asking. Like, maybe he was playing like a character of Charlemagne. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But just a little sarcasm, a little like, uh, yeah, but Piers, like, what about this? Like, some nigga shit. I don't you know. know what I, mean? I think it's just as simple as there's opinions that are popular that feel good when you think about them with your first thought that get exposed when you're sitting across from an expert that can ask questions it, it, to poke holes in your logic. Like, if I ask you what was the premise for believing this, and you don't even have the thought process of how you got to that conclusion. There's yeah. no conversation. So I, I got to avoid saying certain shit to you so I don't expose myself. 
yeah. for not knowing anything. Yeah, because if I say this, you're going to ask me this question, and it's like, nigga, uh, ready. I don't know. Now the castle falls. It's, it could be one Twitter of those things. This is how I like Twitter feel. And that's... I don't even think, I don't think and, it's that, really. So it I get what you're be. saying. So you're saying, like, in a sense, like, Charlemagne feels uh, inferior. Because that's uh, that's an inferior mindset. Yeah. Like, you're not trying inf- to... Well, I think he knows that he's not a political genius. Inferior. N- well, I guess inferior. So yeah, in, that, in terms it, of that. Oh, yeah. In terms of that, and yeah. First, but political genius. Is Piers Morgan a political genius? But it's the difference between being Pretty inferior much. and not feeling genius, inadequate. but he's a commentator, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's the difference between feeling inferior and feeling inadequate. Like, of course, he he's, he knows he's not as smart as them, but he still feels like he he deserves to be able to ask the question. Yeah, but that's the thing. In this conversation, we saw him not asking the questions. Yeah, we saw well, him not answering bad questions. questions. So it's like it's it's deeper. It's a deeper level than you don't know what's happening. It's I'm not willing to engage in this conversation with you. That's that's the biggest thing. So it's one thing because you've be, got nothing to defend it with. That's my point. Is that you? you I don't have to have. Any, I can talk to what's a field that I know nothing about. Uh, like, anesthesiology, right? No. If we're having, if I know nothing about it, and you ask me a question, I can answer it. You can't ask me no anesthesiologist only question. But we're he's asking questions that are just surface level, basic about the topic that we are both presenting that we know a little bit on. Mm. And even if we weren't. Piers and his questioning is setting up the question. All right, I'm going to give you these facts. You know what I'm saying? This it, it shows as well as this, like um, politics, uh, the, the yeah. unwillingness to even engage in the conversation. This is another thing too. Just overall, like mm-hmm. when you're talking on a human level to somebody and y'all are back and forth asking questions and exchange, exchanging questions, trying to understand. It's disrespectful mm-hmm. when somebody doesn't ask answer your question or answers your question with a question. Yeah. That's disrespectful in terms of conversation. Yeah. And at that point you start losing a little bit of respect. Like who the fuck am I talking? It's, am I having a real conversation? Yeah. Because at what, that point you're not trying to understand. You you're just not even trying to, to understand. Spot. Like yeah. So that at that point at, that's when it gets to that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You're not even doing a fake Mm-hmm. You're not even doing the fake fake agreeing. And then yeah. there was a moment when he was like, all right, well, let me ask you a question. And this is when I was like, oh, even as something as simple as this, you're willing to even open yourself up to this conversation. Mm-hmm. Piers asked him, how many people do you think Obama has sent back across the border? How many do you think he, he, he did that to? Nobody knew the answer. Genuinely, nothing completely wrong with that. He asked Envy. He asked Charlemagne. They're like, I don't know. I literally don't know. He said, oh, that that's fine. Just literally just give me a number. Like yeah, Anything. Just give me a number. He's begging them to give him a number. <laughs> These niggas won't give him a number for another two minutes, and they still refuse to do it. And he tried. And like, he, he tri- said yeah, something. He, he was like, a couple hundred thousand? And he was like, okay, And good. then he was like, nah, a million. And maybe. then he was like, Charlemagne, what's your number? He finally gave me a number after I had to fucking beg it out of his neck. Charlemagne still wouldn't give a number. I said, you won't even give a guess. Why can't you just say 10,000? Like, mm-hmm. what, what's, what's, the pro- yeah, what's, yeah. The pro- what's the problem? You, we're holding up this good conversation. Who cares he, if you feed into his point? You don't know the answer to his point. Anyway, let him get his point across, he, yeah. hear his point, and then have the conversation. Because you know he I mean? obviously has a punchline. He's setting it up for the mystery. And it's fine, yeah. but not even playing along in the conversation comes disingenuous. Yeah. So because like, especially yeah. when you know it's coming, and it's... It's radio, like you got to play that, like mm-hmm. because then it becomes a game and not a conversation. Because now you're just trying not to be led instead and of like, let me hear you out. It's Have a we ever asked? Egos. And by we, I mean like, I mean that was definitely the world. Ego. I don't even think it was. Pierce didn't come off ego voice uh, posturing at all. At yeah, all. I wouldn't say I on his bad. I didn't get any ego posturing on any Shut level. Up. It was like a, it felt like two people who have definitely who respect each other mm-hmm. had conversations off there. Like we know each other, mm-hmm. so it's like. Hey, like, like, just give a just, number to, for the fuck of it and be wrong. Can we just, just give just a number? Just, sake, yeah. yeah, but it was like... But having the fear of looking bad and that, to that degree, that's has got to be problematic. Now the conversation is, like, diminished. And now you look kind of weird in this yeah. convo. Has anybody ever asked Charlemagne, like, if he truly cares about politics? Or if it's one of those things where, like, you know, you hit 45, like, you kind of have to care. You know what I mean? Like, So I think... I've never might seen, be dealing with that Because right I've never now. seen anybody ask him, like... Like, how much do you really care? And that's why a lot of these political conversations, like, when your heart is in in something, like, your logic kind of goes out the room, everything just starts to fall apart. But the thing is, this this is all self-inflicted. Like, he's choosing to speak to these people. But it's still... Not necessarily either, but yes. Like, who's being forced to go on the show? 
Nobody's being forced because they have to green light it. Everything. Everybody has to green light everything. But it's like so to a certain not, degree, you want to talk to this person. And yeah, and during political season, you don't turn no political. And you're not down. any person yeah. that goes on the host. What's the uh, the Daily Show right. with the rotating office? Yeah. Like you are interested yeah. in political atmosphere, and you're not at the bare minimum. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it's like Charlemagne is so successful, and like one of the curses is like you're not successful until you're doing shit that you don't really want to do. It might no. not go against your moral code, like no, having no. your anal cavity open, but I it couldn't just be like, yo, Charlemagne, um, like this is managed, like Charlemagne, like yeah. this political bag is getting crazy. You getting gray hairs and shit. Like what's going on this with is that? The, this like, is the transition. Just have some bullshit no, opinion. No, no, no. That's always the knock though. That's like, it, that's almost not low hanging fruit for the argument, but it's just like, that's the easy thing to assume. Like, it's not always the easy thing to, but no. But I'm just trying yeah, to come I, up with a. You get what I'm you're, saying? You're trying to get the explanation of why you're moving like this. Like why? Why, why would you even conduct yourself if, like this? If you do care, then why can't this you just, doesn't seem like you really you, right. Right. If you 100%, really care, 100%, 100%. even because you don't even have to be because, right. I, I need we're to not see having, the passion. We're not having, and I don't see yeah. an open conversation on the two sides. I don't see a an equal back. Because when you really Bravo. care, you, both sides are trying to understand. And Piers, day, Piers is so smart. And maybe Charlemagne knows this too, to where it's like, you're not really changing his mind. Yeah. You're just mm. giving him more facts that he didn't know. It's just yeah. another perspective to think about it on. But at to even do that, you have to have some type of pushback. And politics You gotta is be so able to rebuttal what he just said. Yeah, yeah. my bad. Politics is scary because it's like with everything you say, you have to have three facts with that shit. It doesn't matter yeah, what okay, you say. I feel that. Like yeah. at least three to four, because some, the nigga's gonna yeah, try to yeah, counterattack yeah. You gotta, that. You gotta have you gotta some. Have some yeah. And then again, and it, it depends on who you're talking to in certain situations. Because sometimes it's a little midget in the paint, and you can just go dunk on him because he don't even have the vocabulary to combat you. I That's mean, you don't gotta pick on Bernie, nigga. But what? like, ah, I mean, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> he a little, you know, disabled and shit. But there was slutty. a point in time when I did think that. Uh, I never gave that school a thought. Oh, I'm getting older. I need to graduate into more mature content. I did think that about Adam 22 because he would say things that was like, like I'm 40 years old, like, mm -hmm. and I'm just talking about like viral and like I, I, I service the lowest value of the uh -huh. internet, you know, the lowest grade but of the internet. Like I, I felt that on, on his side. I haven't felt that on Charlemagne's side. It could be a little bit of that though. Cause I feel like that's in any, that's innate. That's innate on anybody. It's you know innate what I'm on it's part anybody. Of in life. Right, right, and it's right. one of those things where like when you were, "Quote unquote celebrity person, yeah. everything is always like just uh, exuberated. What's the word? Heightened, or just heightened. Yeah, you right. get what I mean? Exaggerated, yeah. exaggerated. So exaggerated, yeah. It's, um, is exuberated a word? Can you please look that up? It is. It is. You okay. kind of use it in the right context. Okay, but um, it was a little ti. -ish. He's fucking famous, I'm so it's him. like, yeah. And why not use that as another avenue for a bag? Right. Because it's not like you're lying to people. You just don't care about it as much." As like you you verbalize you don't you care are. about it as much as the platforms that you're going on. But if yeah. that's the case, should he even be doing it? Because you got to think nope. a yeah. lot of these people go into the platform because he has the ear of the young black audience, right? So if you leading them miss uh, astray, it's like and if you're giving us your if we're if we're getting lower value uh, performance off of you conversation off the area that we're going like I'm gonna like it's even a law of diminishing returns right even though I didn't know that they did a Piers Morgan thing which I did watch the next day and just throw that out there again he did do better mm -hmm. on that because it seemed like a nigga needed to take a whole 24 hours to get his mind right to be like oh I can listen to a little bit of what he said he hit up and, some Wikipedia pages yeah and, and add it to the he conversation wasn't, he wasn't driving the ship though but he was he wasn't driving the which ship which is a either. whole another aspect. Right. Right. And, and but, Piers didn't frame it as a I'm trying to attack you, you try to combat me like style of questioning. He had a liberal white bitch, some white dude in the middle. I don't, and then I don't think it was framed like that at the Breakfast Club either. I'm not think, saying that's how oh, it was, but yeah, I'm just yeah. saying like it was it's easy it's even easier to get it off like that. Oh yeah. When yeah, you're yeah. in a relaxed environment. Exactly. Like, yeah. But it was funny too because Charlemagne was displaying exactly what Chris Rock had told Piers Morgan. Don't demonize him more than yeah. what you don't don't over mm -hmm. and under undersell. Undersell. And that's what Charlemagne was doing. And I'm I didn't answer your question. Sorry for disrespecting you, because you did ask me a question about the rating and I never got back to you. I'm going four out of ten. Oh. I, I ain't and the reason I'm going, low. and the reason I'm going four out of ten 
is because at any point, if you're supposed to be having an open conversation, this is the next this is the next level of elevated conversation for all broadcasters, right? Even if it is, Pierce Morgan has showed that he can talk about everything from political to the uh, manosphere to the manosphere to fucking just pearly things, right? Mm. He held, he can hold his own, yes. have op have open conversations. It's it's you as the that's another level of maturity in broadcasting is being able to openly have these conversations with all levels of creators in life in life right yeah. and Op the fact openly, that openly the operative word there yeah but the fact yeah. that in this conversation that's not combative at all and it's completely open and friendly mm -hmm. and not, not there's not i haven't set a single trap for you because i'm friends with you you just say, look, I ain't got, I don't care about nothing that you're talking about right now. Like, this is all I know. Let's move on to the next one. It's like, what the fuck are we doing and, right now? That's, that's as a thing. broadcaster that you throw in the talent on this, Absolutely. on that. You know what I'm saying? Just mm. like when yeah. um, Adam said to t Rell, bro, you're a podcaster. You can't defend yourself with words. Yeah. That's different. They're combative. You know what I'm saying? This is just a conversation. You won't even open up and have a real conversation with me. That's what you're known for. But it also, you, yeah. yeah. It also leads me to believe that he he's just the type of nigga that won't allow his mind to be changed, which is scary. That's another thing too. That's scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah potentially. And it yeah, seems like it's just based off not necessarily service level things, but like the labels. Like yeah. what side of the party he's usually from. I have to disagree with this nigga because that's what my party says. Yeah. I used to feel. I used to feel like he was a little more open, and I don't. I don't know if it's just today, but it feels it's a little less open today. It's definitely closing up to the to the you conversation. Sure. You think Charlemagne like tries to be for black people? You think that's part of the problem? Yeah, he is. A, like he's not well, part just of the for problem. black people. Like he's trying to remain like the image for niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like he's trying to appeal to niggas. It's not as bad as Jonathan Majors. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, 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 nobody's doing it worse than that. Nah. Nobody, nobody, yeah. nobody, nobody it wants it more than him. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, He's a horny for this. That's a different thing. Like, it's, it's a fetish, that nigga, that nigga, yeah. he mm. wants that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, uh, he wanted Coretta Scott. He mm. needed. He's got yeah. photo shoots for it specifically. I don't scary. even know how to answer that question. Can you ask him one more time? <laughs> Swear to God, I forgot. Do you think Charlemagne <laughs> wants to be for black people, right? Is he is trying to hard? Saying, is that part of the problem? Is like, mm -hmm. is that because I'm trying to think like. Well, you think he needs to consider white? I'm not man? thinking as a consumer. <laughs> I'm thinking. As a, I'm white now, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like. Are you thinking like, is he leaning into the Dr. Umar? I'm and thinking all the as a nigga like, who. Like, I'm thinking as a business, right? Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? And like, what's going to always keep your business running? Is your bottom line, and if your saying. bottom line uh -huh. is niggas, black people, I see what you're saying. You kind of have to play that play into Don it. Imus. So you're saying is yeah, he playing it like that, or is it truly his? Is it because gut if it's feeling he's thing? playing defense only? I think. You know what it could be also because even when Piers Morgan said he was like you, you have the perspective in the ear of the young black culture. I think he might literally be reading Twitter just to express what's like black Twitter feels. Instead of maybe his own thoughts in the beginning. Charlemagne? Sometimes. Yeah, Charlemagne. But you know what's funny is like Charlemagne thinks that nobody has original thoughts and everybody goes online to form their thoughts. But he does come off like somebody that's read thoughts or heard thoughts from people that he respected uh -huh. and runs with their thoughts. That's but, a fact. I don't, I don't think he's claiming them as his, though. It's, it's his. It's, Which is even crazier. Yeah. It's just a vessel. Yeah, but that, I think they kind of put that on him. You call the nigga an empty soul. <laughs> but you haven't. I like, think mentally in his head, he's like, when I'm in front of all these politicians and these political leaders, I have to echo what these people feel. That's the whole reason they came to me. Yeah, yeah. And so in but that, the, we might lose what he actually feel. But that's just kind of giving. But that just answered the question. It did, and that's what when I. That's also when I said he's only playing defense. Is I think what. I think there's always uh, the threat of losing everything. Not losing everything. I don't want to make it sound that extreme. But it's, it's always looming, right? And it's like, think about what, think about how little of conversation you can have with somebody mm -hmm. who's worried about their past coming up. And think about... And possibly ruining a part of their future. And There's that's, a few themes and narratives you can't even touch, nigga. Bro. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Might trigger some memories. That's what I'm saying. And, and then, so imagine I can't have this conversation with you in the red pill because mm -hmm. that's that's only going to dig up graves. Yeah, I can't have yeah, this yeah. conversation. I've been so vocally saying I'm center shitting on Biden, also shitting on Trump, but I can't even have a conversation about the pros and cons of both either with you. It's like yeah. because I cuz I can't betray the ones who are supporting me. Which is why I was about to say it's kind of the same dilemma that Donald Trump faces to where it's, 
he has a strong base that he always awesome. plays to, even though he could probably appeal to more people if he just For kind sure. of extended that bridge but you without a lose- fear of losing that home oh, base. Yeah. Everybody kind of has that certain level, but that's what... But it's different. It's, Donald, it's Trump the loyalty, is, the Trump the is loyalty from, kills the yeah. curiosity. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah You can't yeah. even really divulge into a true conversation and honestly come to your own conclusions. Right. Because yeah. you got to defend yeah. other talking points. Like, it, kinda right. happens, it happens on podcasts all the time. Like, he'll talk some shit about a nigga who's a legend that I don't love, but I got to defend because he's being abrasive about the nigga. Right, right. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just, and it's, it's one of those things that's weird because it's like, He's a businessman, so yeah. it's it's a completely different conversation. Man, he's, I'm a business man. Like he's not just Charlemagne anymore, so it, it's but weird. That's, and that's it's disappointing, though. You know what I'm saying? That like that's this is natural elevation, and I want to see you have higher level conversations. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if these are the areas that you're going to go into, or be thrusted into, you would think. It's just what the fuck, bro. It's you like if I'm you're going to do I it, think, at least have all the facts right, right? No, don't even have all the facts. Have an open conversation. That's yeah. all I'm asking. Yeah. I'm, asking, I'm asking for a base level of open conversations. Know nothing. Know nothing, and that's fine. But when you're, a, ge- but when you're genuinely having a yeah. real conversation, you learn. You learn. And, 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 espe- the, and, you, and when you're genuinely having a conversation on both sides, you learn as well. So yeah. it's like, but when you're coming at it, in a combative way. With one way, in a defensive way in this conversation yeah. when I'm not even coming defensive. I'm like, this nigga's a piece of shit when he did this. I don't like, this is peers. I don't like when Trump did that. I don't Trump like with that. This is a piece of shit move. All these things. So it's like, nigga, we all in the same, we shitting on the same people together, but you can't even have the open conversation, but he did do this. He did do this. These are all pluses. You know what I'm saying? That's why I kind of wanted to see him step outside all these corporate platforms and try to have these conversations on his own accord. I don't know if it's going when he's less connected. When, yes, because like you got to think, like it's, yeah. it's, shit is <laughs> happening on Breakfast Club, is happening on Piers Morgan show Whatever. on Fox. Right. It's always on a public, uh, heli, uh, fucking heavily televised production. Yeah. Like um, what yeah. what you it's never just What's... on his own accord. He has a YouTube channel, his own like, fucking solo podcast where he can just really get it off. Like what's and his name? Like, like, like what's his name? Uh, Stephen Which A. Which is no excuse. Like that's yeah. why I fuck with Stephen A.'s YouTube because it's a completely different energy. Like it's still professional. Facts. But it's like shit. We in there like it's late night. You with know Steve what I mean? Nash. It's like late yeah. night. Yeah, it's, it's it's a little bit different. Yeah, show me. He just he comes off like an old nigga that's not willing to make no change. And if that's the case, just say you don't want to make no damn change. Mm. Just come off like that. Like don't say that you're one thing and then move in another thing. Cause he he's like in terms of like an old nigga not willing or can even see change. Yeah, he's displayed that not only on this political side but even on Breakfast Club when the YouTube not Breakfast Club uh Brilliant Idiots. When the YouTube thing was a was a big debate on brilliant mm-hmm. idiots, where it's like YouTube is stupid, it's not a viable business, and it's mm-hmm. like nigga, you sit next to Schultz, who literally obliterates your arguments. The man that you sit next to every day, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. it's like you're fighting this old nigga mindset, and we all see but you fighting this shit. It's, it's almost like, like the programming is so strong with him is that in yeah. order for him to change his mind, it's gonna take a lot of time and dedication. It takes a lot of facts, bro. Yeah. And, and, that, and then I. Even if I lay everything in front of you, I still have to give you a week to kind of work through, and then I might get twenty. For I might get twenty five percent more lenience with you in this next conversation than uh, I did in the first one. It's almost like you can't plant the seed; you just got to leave the seed around. And got to leave it around. It and that, way and one the day dirt. he'll look at it and be like, "Oh, okay, yeah." yeah. That does make a little bit of sense now. The thing is, he does change his tune eventually. It he's takes just, him a it's while, always though. a reluctant process. It's, it's a, we have to wait for you to go through this. That's because he's gotten to a, he's gotten to a point now where it's like he's no longer just the student or just the person who wants to learn the most. He's now the authority in his mind. So it's and harder for him. I was just about to say to, that. You know what I'm saying? Like when you have Piers Morgan telling you Charlemagne, you're the voice for niggas. Like how can you not kind of walk with a little chip on your shoulder, be a little defensive? Like I'm not going yeah. like this white man, you know what I mean? Prove me wrong. You know what I'm saying? He so said, I'm the, you're supposed to. This generation is Malcolm X, essentially. Yeah, like, nigga, you, you the voice of the streets. Uh, he didn't put this all that This is Jonathan Major's <laughs> wet <laughs> dream. Charlemagne. Sh- Sh- Charlemagne. Sh- 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 you are the voice of the culture. Was that British? Nah, I don't know what you that are the was. You are the voice of the court. You sound like drag queen a yeah. little bit. Wow. Yeah. Took it far. What's up with you in these... <laughs> don't don't get started. Don't get started. You, you don't want to play that game. There's four hours of tape in the last two weeks. This is very You're damning better than that. You. You're not a hack. Very damning for you. It's better jokes than gay jokes, nigga. Gay isn't drag. Uh, nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gay. It's gay. It's gay. 
gay. It is gay. I had to think about it. It's like, it is. But it is. It's, I had to it's, let that it's, it's, Yeah. Okay. Ah, it's gay. It's a fine line. And shout out to all the drag members watching this. Yeah. Probably. It's a couple thousand, so we got everybody. Mm, yeah, we got at least yeah. a couple delinquents, nigga. Anybody could be a classmate, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. let's move over to the next thing though. Um, 